Welcome to Sky Tools for Imaging. I'm Greg Crinklaw, the developer of Sky Tools. I don't think it is an overstatement to say that Sky Tools Imaging is unlike any astronomy software that has come before. It employs a model of your imaging system in order to predict the signal from an object. And from that, it can predict the signal to noise ratio in your final image stack. The signal to noise ratio, or SNR for short, is a measure of image quality. If your goal is to make good looking images, the SNR determines how good the final stacked and processed image can look. If you're doing science, the SNR determines how accurate your measurements are. SkyTools Imaging also knows your image scale. It can estimate the sky brightness at any time, and of course, how high in the sky a given target gets from your location. If we put all of these things together, we have a powerful tool for selecting suitable target objects, customized for your location and imaging system. Different types of objects require different approaches. Imaging stars and other star-like objects is very different from imaging an extended object, such as a galaxy. And emission light objects such as H2 regions or supernova remnants are different as well because they offer the possibility of using narrow band filters. Comets and minor planets move and change over time, so they also require different techniques and planning. For each of these types of objects, Sky Tools can calculate the signal that will be received in each filter. A galaxy will have very little signal in your narrow band O3 filter, but on the other hand, the Dumbbell Nebula is dominated by O3 emission. Knowing this is critical for planning. For a faint star, quasar, or minor planet, the question could be as simple as, can I detect it? Or what is the total exposure time required to detect it? And even what sub-exposure time should I use to have the best chance of detecting it? For extended objects such as galaxies, H2 regions, supernovae remnants, reflection nebulae, and comets, there is a trade-off between image scale and signal. If it only covers a few pixels, it won't make for a very interesting image, but the signal will be shared between only a few pixels. At higher image scale, more detail will be available, but the signal is spread out over so many pixels that it may be difficult or even impossible to obtain a high quality image. One thing that Sky Tools can do is to help you explore different image scales. If you have focal changers available or different binnings to achieve the best overall result. In addition to selecting targets, Sky Tools can determine the optimum time to observe your target in each filter and choose optimum sub-exposure times based on the current conditions. Putting all of these capabilities together, this is something very new. Have you ever wondered why Tesla's Cybertruck looks like it does? You might at first think they're going for some new futuristic kind of out there look, but it turns out that this is just what you get if you start with the idea of using stainless steel and then logically design everything from that point. In a similar way, rather than stuff the new capabilities of Sky Tools into a standard interface, I allowed them to lead me to a new interface design. This is why Sky Tools Imaging also introduces a new kind of workflow and interface. Like the Cybertruck, this may take some time to get used to. Before we look at the workflow, there's some SkyTools terminology that we should define. We usually think of using our telescope, but in fact, we are using a whole system consisting of the telescope or optical tube assembly, camera, mount, filters, guider, control system, etc. The imaging system is all of these components taken together. In SkyTools, it forms a unit that brings together everything that SkyTools needs to know to make its calculations. An imaging project is a similar construct. It describes how you intend to image your target object, including the filters, binning, composition, and exposure goals. It brings together everything SkyTools needs to know about your project in order to plan your imaging sessions. 
There can be as many imaging projects to find as you want. And in fact, the more, the better. With that out of the way, the workflow itself isn't that complicated. But understanding what we are trying to accomplish, which is one and the same as understanding how to take better images, may take some cogitation. The workflow starts with target selection. You may already have a target in mind. In that case, you could use the designation search tool to look it up in the database, then open it in the object information window. This window pulls together everything you need to know to determine the suitability of that object. If you decide to image the target object, the next step is to create an imaging project. You could also search for suitable targets via ready-made target lists. These lists are available for download from our website. The target selection tool is used to select the most suitable targets from the list. Many people assume that because this is the first tool they see, that this tool is the focal point of Sky Tools. But that's not really the case. It's really more of a starting point. You could use the database power search tool to perform a focused search looking for suitable objects that meet your own criteria. You could dump these objects to your own target list and then use the target selection tool to make your final choices. There are also ways to select suitable target objects for your own imaging system. So you could skip the target selection tool step altogether. Regardless of how you choose a target, the next step in the workflow is to create an imaging project for it. The imaging project is just short of a plan for taking images. In this step, you define how you want to image the target. Here, you can finally adjust the composure, select a camera rotation angle, create a mosaic, choose the filters you will be using, and establish your exposure goals for each filter. I said before that it, it's just short of a plan. That's because it doesn't include when you will be imaging. The third step is loosely called scheduling. That's the when part. In this step, you will determine when to image each of your imaging projects. This is where you either prepare a plan ahead of time to take your images or take your images in real time. Exactly how this step works depends on you and your imaging system. So you will need to choose the tool that is designed for the way you work. There are three scheduling tools. The first is the scheduler, which is used to create a plan for a night that will be executed later. If you use iTelescope or basic ACP, you will use the scheduler to generate an ACP plan to be uploaded. If you make your observations manually by a hand panel, you will use it to generate a plan and print it out to take with you to the telescope. If you use ACP Expert Scheduler, you will use the ACP Expert tool to directly submit your projects to the ACP scheduler. Sky Tools will apply artificial intelligence to set the optimum constraints. ACP Scheduler will make the observations, and then you can query ACP to import the progress that has been made on the planned observations. If you are using a mount directly connected to Sky Tools, you will use the real-time imaging tool. Once it gets dark, you will connect to your mount, and Sky Tools will guide you through the steps that will optimize your images. Sky Tools will slew the telescope, and you will focus, set the filter, center the field, and set exposure times in the same way that you already do. How exactly that will work for you depends greatly on your control system. The final step in the workflow is logging your observations or your images. You do this via your imaging project. Doing so serves three purposes. One, when you mark your project as completed, it will no longer show up in the scheduling tools. Two, when you mark individual observations, your images, as having been completed, the scheduling tools will schedule only those observations needed to complete the project. And three, once a project is completed, it can serve as a searchable archive of your observations. So that's the basic workflow, but it's not the totality of the software. There are many other tools that su supplement the basic workflow, and I'm going to mention a few. 
The exposure calculator is very useful for exploring your options for a specific object, including the effects of changing sub-exposure times or changing just about anything else. Experimenting with it can offer many insights into how best to image a target object. SkyTools doesn't start out showing a view of the sky like old-fashioned planetarium software, but that doesn't mean that this capability isn't there. In fact, there are three different kinds of charts available, each intended for a different purpose. The overhead sky chart displays a simulation of the entire sky overhead as seen to the naked eye. It simulates the background sky depending on your light pollution and the current conditions such as daylight, twilight, or moonlight. The naked eye chart is very similar but displays a smaller part of the sky. Finally, the interactive atlas is a very powerful, fully customizable atlas that can display stars to 20th magnitude, millions of deep sky objects, and solar system objects that can include comets, the fake moons of planets, and all known minor planets. The components of multiple stars appear as you zoom in, including those with orbits accurately drawn for the date. The field of view of your camera can be displayed and there is a pop-up window that simulates what your camera will record. These additional tools are almost always available via a right click, which opens them with all of the context from where you clicked. For example, in this case, we opened the exposure calculator for this object already set for this date, location, and imaging system. Using a right click to open a tool in context is a core principle in Sky Tools. Lastly, I'd like to take a minute to go over some basic imaging terms that you will see used in the software and in these tutorials. In recent years, the word observing has become a shorthand for visual observing in some circles. But in Sky Tools and in these tutorials, I will be using it in the traditional sense of the word which is to mean any sort of measurement or well, observation of the sky. Observations can consist of images taken for any purpose. Spectra, sketches, notes, measurements with radio telescopes, HST images, or even LIGO gravity wave detections. The act of collecting these observations is called observing. So your images are your observations. And when your telescope is working for you, you are observing. You will also see the use of the term tile in Sky Tools. These sometimes go by different names, like frames, but I think we can all agree that a mosaic is naturally made up of tiles. So I have adopted this terminology because I think it's very clear. Air mass is a measure of the amount of air your telescope is looking through. It depends on the altitude of your target object at the time. Directly overhead is an air mass of one. As you move closer to the horizon, the air mass increases. At around an altitude of 30 degrees, the air mass becomes two, and you are imaging through twice as much air. Below that, the air mass increases very quickly. The best images are taken high in the sky at low air mass values, well below two. When you image higher, less light is lost to the atmosphere. There's less distortion and more detail available, and stars will be smaller on your images. Because stars can change size, when combining images from different nights, it is best that the nights have similar seeing and that the images are taken at similar air mass. Astronomical seeing is a description of how steady the atmosphere is. Nights of poor seeing will reveal less detail or lower resolution. And the stars will be more bloated in your images. The seeing increases as you move closer to the horizon. It is important to remember that when you tell Sky Tools how good the seeing is, you are specifying the seeing at the zenith, and Sky Tools will apply corrections for images obtained closer to the horizon. A related term is FWHM or the full width 
at half max. This is a measurement of seam based on a star profile. When the seeing is poor, the profile is wider and the peak is lower. The FWHM is the width measured halfway up the profile. Many people use the terms pixel scale and resolution interchangeably. But resolution is not the same thing as pixel scale. Pixel scale is simply the amount of sky captured by one pixel. When most people talk about the resolution of their camera, what they really mean is the pixel scale. True resolution is more complicated than that and varies with the conditions. Resolution is the maximum amount of detail that can be discerned in your final image. Discerning a detail requires that it cover more than one pixel and is constrained by the fidelity of the optics and the scene at the time that the image is taken. A quick note about units. You are familiar with the units of time, days, hours, minutes, and seconds. These are abbreviated in Sky Tools as D, H, M, and S. Angular distances or separations measured in the sky have similar sounding units, but they are not related to time. These are actually angles, often called arc. The separation between two objects is measured in degrees, minutes of arc or arc minutes, and seconds of arc or arc seconds. Degrees are denoted by a degree symbol minutes of arc by a single apostrophe, and seconds of arc by a double apostrophe. A separation between two stars could be written as 12 arc seconds, or even 20 degrees, 32 arc minutes, 43.6 arc seconds. Declinations are traditionally displayed in this same way. When displayed in the traditional manner in units of hours, right ascension is both a measure of angular distance in the sky and of time. This is because an RA can be described via the rotation of the Earth over time. This is, in fact, fundamental to how it is defined. Because this is basically a time unit, you will see a right ascension displayed in hours, minutes, and seconds of time, perhaps as 14 hours, 23 minutes, 16.8 seconds. You should now be prepared with what you need to know to get started. The rest of the introduction tutorials will take you through setting up your location and your imaging system and each of the main tools in depth. The basic workflow is the same for everyone up to the scheduling step. So everything up to that step will be covered in the introductory tutorials. Scheduling depends on your imaging system and your control system in particular. So for that step, there are separate workflow tutorials, depending on how you observe. Once finished with the introductory tutorials, pick the workflow tutorial that best matches your needs. There are also advanced tutorials that look at features in greater detail and offering insights and tips. Special project tutorials look at specialized imaging in detail. This is for things like imaging comets or doing astrometry. More tutorials will be added with time. I hope you find these tutorials useful. And if you have questions, please bring them up on the SkyTools forums. There are people standing by to answer any questions you may have, myself included. And if you have a question, many others likely have the same question. So you are doing everyone a service by asking. Clear skies and thanks for watching.